formal start. Um, why there's a formal start is because the book uh, is taking about uh, six years production time. Covers development, work of work over a period of 12 years. And um, there are many uh, people that have been involved in it. Foremost, I should mention Takura Hoshino, who's uh, co author, and he let me then images are in, uh, in the book as well. Beyond that, there are many people that have worked on us. Uh, there's one thing I, I would like just to read out, I don't want to read it very much. It's, uh, it's important to uh, yeah, for me because we're here. This book is dedicated to the memory of Alvin Boyarski and John Hayden, who challenged the architectural imaginations of men. Uh, as you know, Alvin Boyarski, former chairman of the Architectural Association, covered quite a long uh, period of the, the life of this group. Uh, he, he is the one who initiated this book, he kick-started this book and he pushed uh, us into beginning to develop the ideas, beginning to develop them as, a, as an idea, as in book form. One note of warning I should tell you, in any way thinking of a methodological book, which this is, think twice. It's uh, sometimes fun sometimes incredible, but many times uh, incredibly difficult. So I should say it's, uh, it's, it's an outline of the methodology, and uh, I will talk briefly about this, this outline. There's no claim that it, is, that it is complete, no methodology can ever be complete, and, and, and yet I think sometimes it's important to, to put it out, to say here, here, here it is. And, so to really push that, we have even added the manifesto to it. And I'll, I'll take you through that. The book is called Urban Flotsam. And it's a, let me see if that works now. I'm just gonna sit here. It can be very painful life, I think. See it. It's, it's called Urban Flotsam because the, the condition of the city currently it's very much about uh, yeah, the city being a second skin of the earth, which, which wraps the first skin of the earth. But what we know of this, this city is very much a, a fragments. Uh, I would claim actually that current cities are more and more fragments that we know that we think of as cities, but effectively they are fragments of other holes. And in a way, the key diagram of the book, which is on the front, it is about. Uh, trying to, to find out what are the, the, the holes to which these fragments belong and what are the forces that uh, um, that uh, yeah, change these fragments or cause those fragments to fragment even be inferred. Um, the way it's quite, uh, it's quite simple. Although, Roughly, you run you to the book. It's quite simple, really. Sometimes, at some stage, I wanted to to see it like a children's story. Can you talk about it like a children's story? Can you deal with complexity in, in a simplified way? And to, can you ask these four questions: how to see, how to play, how to tell, and, and how to act? And that's in a way all that it's uh, that it's about. Of course, the problem is if if we feel that. It, City is like this wrapper of the earth and consists of fragments uh, that are stirred or caused by <laughs> conditions that are under the skin. The main question is really how do you know what forces change the city, what forces influence the current conditions uh, changing the city. So, so how to see is really about that, uh, that question. How, how can you create observational instruments that begin to see phenomena that are new and because they're new uh, we don't necessarily have the tools with which to see them. 
this is uh, the, the question that, that all planners now and all architects uh, face. How do you deal with new phenomena that you cannot describe properly? I mean, um, in a way, this book gives some answers, but it maybe stirs up even more just the thought about inventing and observational tools. And I would like to see the book in a way inviting to invent even more than rather saying, look, it's like this. More like could, it could be like this, rather than it must be like this. But you can invent, like, where you have to constantly invent uh, tools of observation. And brief, I will, after I will go through the book, I will briefly talk about some situations in which we're currently working and we're actually applying what the book is setting up and where we're discovering that this is very much the case. There is a need for new tools in, in, in a complex uh, urban and regional local situations. Um, so we're in a way having a lot of satisfaction now finding them back. I'll talk briefly about that. So the book consists of four chapters. Um, the first one is Proto-Urban Conditions, which, which is about this search for phenomena that are emerging that are new and ways that you can begin to describe them. Uh, it does not state them, it does not yet fix exactly how they could be, it just begins to play with the the way that you can order them. The second one is about uh, yeah, the, the understanding of that complexity through models, just how to model things, how to create dynamic models because the presumption is that there are dynamic uh, conditions in that complexity. And the word Taschenzel describes a small world. Um, so the description of the world in a small version. The first, the, the third chapter is about the taxonomy of the full It means what kind of bits do you have how do you how do you unfold them? How do they develop? And um, yeah, how do you begin to spin uh, in, in an environment? In the fourth chapter, little bodies, is about um, conditions, prototypes, I call them, that you throw in this environment you've observed in order to create changes, mutations, to create the way the threshold conditions uh, towards other. Uh, forces. So in a way, how to enhance, how to regulate the, the, the dynamics of the complexity. And they're then accompanied by a series of case, uh, uh, case studies. So I won't, I won't go through everything. I'm going to show you a few things. <coughs> One thing that's important to note, you cannot read it, but you will read a, a few. It's a very funny image. This is the list of keywords for the manifesto. The manifesto is basically a, a, a book in a book. It's a list of, of uh, uh, lines that narrate or state or define all the concepts that the book is about. And I'll, I'll read out a few, you'll see a few. Uh, this is uh, the list of collaborators, some of whom, some of whom are, are here. Okay, the, I, I just read a few out, because I feel sometimes you have to, to also tell a story. And to, so the book is part of the story. The skin of the earth wraps the earth. Cities form a second skin. The, the dynamics of the skin of the earth affects the second skin. The increasing complexity of the second skin calls for the definition of new of a new practice, and with it a new toolbox, the construction and management of cities. Now I want to say something about the, the manifesto line. The manifesto line is an independent page that runs through the book. So one of the things that we got really fascinated by is the architecture of the book, and uh, how the manifesto lines can be a, a virtual book, an independent structure, and yet it, it weaves in and out of the content of the book, which is partially explanatory, didactic, and partially uh, case study-wise. So the manifesto lines are, are set up in three layers. You have the manifesto line on the top, you have commentary on the middle, and footnotes on the top. And that, that goes in and out of the, of the book, throughout the book. There's a certain amount of uh, essay work in the book, which I will not enter into, that takes time to read. 
maybe one thing I would like to point out since we are at school here is, is the interest that, that I personally and all the people that have worked in the book in the notion of educational spaces and didactic tools. And a lot of the work in here in this book has been uh, developed by, um, by doing work in educational institutions. For example, here at AEA, we started in 83 and developed some parts of, of, of this method um, in a variety of workshops all over the world. And of course, eventually by, uh, by Cora, which was founded in 94 as a research laboratory at uh, Architects and Planning and Landscape Office. The book ends this, the concepts of urban galleries and urban curation, and I will talk, talk for a few minutes uh, about those afterwards, how they become now uh, planning tools that are implemented in a series of commissioned uh, situations. Just to jump ahead from our tour to that, the urban gallery is, is a concept introduced as a, in a way to, 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 to name, to give a name to this new toolbox. And the urban curator is, is a search, is a name we gave to the, uh, the search for a new practitioner, at least the mutation of a practitioner uh, that is something between the, uh, the architect and the uh, many others. It basically, it's about taking care of the, of, of the environment and somehow dealing with that. So it's really searching for new practices, and we are among many that are involved in that kind of search. Um, it's, it, uh, what, I, what, what you see on the left is uh, it's, it's, it's a variety of slides of older work because the book itself goes back to a series of quite old sources, you could say research. Uh, there's a lot of research work that was done in model form and I, I see that the, that the research, which is in a way distinct from an environment and distinct from any given commission, is necessary to, to begin to invent, to, even to, imagine, uh, to imagine a world. To imagine a world as a model and to, to begin to ask questions about it, the, the skin of the world in which we, uh, in which we live. So uh, I felt it was important to show some of the quite old work. It's almost like an archaeology of work. Uh, to say, look, you, you need almost, you need that isolation of, of, of creative work sometimes to, to invent. And the book is about urging, urging one to do that. This is a project that uh, we did in 88 in, uh, in Moscow. It's called the Skin of the Earth. And it was about the dissolution of the uh, skin of the earth in a, into a domesticated environment. So that's, that is, a, is in a way, the book sets out its, its, its own older references. The city is a life form. It has emotions. That's maybe one of the key premises of the, of the whole book. And the, the attempt to understand this emerging phenomena is very much about linking them to to this, to this kind of city having, uh, having emotions, being a life form, therefore having maybe parts of the life forms in it. So, a few more I read, but I'm not going to read them all. To understand the second skin as a dynamic environment requires an awareness of its emotions. The emotions of the city are called photoerbic conditions. Photoerbic conditions agitate the second skin. This again, it's, it's another basic premise which, uh, which with which we start the book. And this is a key image that I've shown <laughs> in so many lectures, so some of you will know it. It's about how to see this inner agitation, which is marked as an agitated sign on the surface, and which turns into stirrings of the second skin. In this case, uh, the, 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 the hem, the edge of the cloth of, of, of Mary, this is Mary and her child, it allowed the painters of that period to, to show her inner agitation. I think she's thinking about what happens, what's going to happen to her son. And the, the mark of the agitation is a sign on the surface of the picture plane. So that is really what the rest of the book is about. And so the first investigation should be did in this direction, where in, in, in Russia, in, uh, this is Moscow, where we actually went to a smaller town just after the, the revolution. And we looked at the emergent phenomena in a, in a town uh, like uh, Alexandrov, which is a small town north, west, northeast of, of Moscow, where all the rules were thrown off the board, and all authorities were, were put into prison. And 
it's a, so the first chapter deals with, in a way, how to create a method. There's no method yet, in a way. How to, how to enter, how to see, and then how new phenomena need new eyes. And how do you immerse yourself in the city with new eyes? It means walking through it, entering its flux, encountering emergent phenomena, recognizing them as manifestations of polarization, sorting them into boxes. That is, of course, linked to this uh, another key premise of the, 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 the relationship between the global forces and, and local conditions, and the need to understand the symptoms of the way the local, global forces act upon the global environments, and the difficulty we have in understanding the way that global forces act in global environments. We see the symptoms, but we don't necessarily recognize the symptoms as being the same, uh, being the symptoms of the same forces as other symptoms in different things. So this whole book thing is also about the, the being able to slide around the skin of the earth and being able to see, able to see things in different places. So in this case, we just set up walks. There were there different walks we did. And the walks gave rise to, the, to a, a reaction to the phenomena. And out of that emerged a, a beginning of, of a methodological approach. So the way often there is no method yet. So you may have a toolbox, but you may have to adapt the method to a toolbox to a given situation. So these are uh, pages on different walks that we did in that, in that city in attempts to, to order these different uh, phenomena. Um, what we did eventually here is the beginning of a raw uh, schematization. Uh, for example, this is just one image about walking through a series of societal patterns of the city and we very quickly begin to go from to group, to group from community to community, beginning to map them out. But ultimately, it's really about the game, and about the fragments of the game, and trying to, to give them a name. So here we started to, to, to order them. This is the beginning of a schematic ordering of phenomena, of emerging phenomena. Why do we need to be schematic? Uh, I always get this question, why being so rigid? Well, it's good to be rigid, because then at least you can sort out the bits with which you can play, and with which you can remake uh, the world as it is, and thereby intervene. Uh, so this is the way the beginning of the ordering of the phenomena and the game structure, and the beginning of the setting up, the understanding of the processes. Now the whole second chapter is about naming these processes and beginning to link them to specific kind of models. This is the beginning also of, of the, uh, the, the key uh, model in the book that is in fact called Urban Frost and the, you see the game board here, the, the, the floating fragments which uh, signify the phenomena which are done described uh, here. So that's color there. The book is actually the keywords of the phenomena are colored. So the next step is really about beginning then to name, give names to these different processes. We developed a set of four basic processes. It has been around now for a while, but here we try to really set it up as a key. Uh, a key model. How do you understand a dynamic environment if you look at any one point? Uh, well, we said by taking a set of basic processes and projecting it on that point in space and registering all uh, existing dynamics in those four basic uh, processes. Uh, and then uh, enhancing them, so then creating models with them. This is the beginning of the second chapter, second chapter but it's very funny, somewhere here there will be a model over many years, I've tried with groups of people to create a live models, dynamic models, to use groups of people, I mean, in collaboration, of course, in order to, to try to, 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 to image or imagine these forces of the, of the, that these forces underneath the earth, or underneath the skin of the earth, you see, just, just on the top, you see the kind of graphic abstraction of the skin of the earth, and the people like the funny beings being to push, so they are the phenomena, in a way, that, that here okay, on the surface of the earth and begin to create conflicts that we as, as architects have to deal with. So the second chapter is about this, this pocket world. So there uh, we took the opportunity actually to look at, uh, at some models we did previously just to understand the totality of the earth and the skin of the earth. And so uh, this is what I call the soul cycle, uh, which is about the first skin, the second skin, the marking of the skin and the creating of the the main sign, built here in courtyard of the Architectural Association in 1898. It was an 
imagine in this. But those gave rise to that point where we don't said, okay, I go back for a moment. What if that image on the right, called the black square, uh, what if that is now a model of, of the dynamic forces? How, we're beginning, how do we begin to take those forces apart? So that is what this second chapter uh, is about. I will just show you some things that are other models that we work with. These are all models of trying to create these polar conditions. On the top, you see this uh, again. This very likely there. You see the cartographic skin. That's the, that's the skin of the, of the Earth. And this is a model built in New York City. Once more about uh, trying to image these uh, these uh, emergent phenomena. So, in the center of the book, there is a there is a uh, model called Herbert Watson, in which we try to simplify more and more the whole thing. I think the great art of dealing with complexity is actually simplifies things. So what we did is we, we built a game word. I can only show you this image because the other images don't come up very well here. But it's a game word. It's a set of loose fragments and three taxonomies. And a series of moves to begin to create simulations of complexity. And one uh, layer deals with the, with the earth, the land. The other layer is the buildings and, and infrastructure, traffic, the third layer is information and, and, uh, and dreams. So very much uh, layers that we, we deal with uh, in, uh, in general planning situations. But it's a model, it's a tiny model. And it's a, a funny one. I mean, it's only meant to create simulations of the way that, that singularities, like this one here, singularities may, be, may appear or may be imposed on an environment, just like the Berlin Wall emerged initially only as a white line drawn on the on the ground and eventually of course turned into an incredibly complex dynamic environment until now we can have the consequences of that, that one single white line in the kind of new uh, Berlin but uh, this is Berlin project Berlin 88 so here more models now one thing we've been trying to do is over and over again show something for real in the book this is one thing I, it's an experiment. I, I hope it works. It's a funny thing I want to show you. I don't think it's a mistake. It's, it's something different. Again, out of one of these great narratives, the, the, the Bible. So this is about the book of Job. So they sat down with him upon the ground, seven days and seven nights. And not spake a, a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Job's grief was so great that it was absolute silence. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day and Job's faith. So this is what we call an embedded model. And uh, this is the beginning of a, of a set of concepts that we're trying to set up in this book. Concepts with which we uh, enrich and, and fuel the, the toolbox. Other models are knots, which are key elements um, for the prototypes that come in chapter four. Knots are about mod both modeling complexity, uh, for example, the Viking knot was actually a tool, was a visual tool with which they uh, modeled a, a, a dynamic uh, cosmos, but at the same time, they are models of the instruments, of the, of the programs that we have to deal with in, in the kind of multiple space use we are now involved so much in the current practice. So there's a didactic level to the book, which I will not spend too much time on. The various concepts introduced, framing, for example, is one, and shifting of frames in the situation in Tokyo. But really, of course, at the center of the book emerges this EOTM, which is, I think, a Japanese word for now. It's the various workshops that we've done in, in Tokyo about it. Which is, uh, is this basic set of four processes erasure, origination, transformation, and migration. They are both explained in, 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 the, in the context of existing environment at the same time. They are explained in this booklet that's out already, it's called Metaspaces, in which we define them as, as, as basically as separate processes. So uh, the claim is that with those we can define any uh, given uh, dynamic environment. Uh, we've done it with many 
situations in the world. There is a kind of didactic exercise that concludes what I call the winds of change to blind, blindfold the people that create a chaotic environment. Again, to, sim to, to simulate this, this, this simple means of complex environments. But really, what started to happen is then, um, yeah, let me say simple to explain. Drinking the cup of coffee, this is in Tokyo. And uh, this was then pushing the cup of coffee out of your legal boundary, the origination, over the fold of the book. Washing it is the management of the Kaiyu Museum in Tokyo. And, and well, you cannot see that. This is a beautiful photograph by Ilan. It shows the, the water going away to the pipe system of Tokyo. Now, this is a very simple um, set of processes. It's like a proto language that, is, that immediately can be used to enter different urban systems from one point onwards. So that's what we did. We were invited at some point, commissioned by a group of planners in the in the Cologne Bonn region, where we applied this this uh, yeah this search method of the four processes, then in, in German it was started to be called the the Bonn method because we threw beans on a, on a map just to, to exemplify the random sampling the method that is necessary. Um, so we built up an encyclopedic system of of uh, these basic proce processes. To the, together they are called mini scenarios. In, in this uh, regional environment here. Uh, the problem there being that there were 15 municipalities that could not plan or, or even talk together, and they wanted us to, to, to find these immersion phenomena, which then led to a series of scenarios, which I will not get into here right now. Another commission study was by the city of Helsinki as part of a uh, professional workshop, where we started to, to apply this, this, this system of four basic processes towards the layering which we used to also begin to gather uh, what could be the beginning of the, the, the taxonomy of the next chapter, namely the actors and agents who belong to, to the different layers. And here we started to give it an expanded meaning to these four processes. So it begins to expand, expand into effectively uh, an analysis of four territories that, that deal with a, with a kind of cultural identity of an area, uh, kind of an expanse of it in, public space terms. The colors are completely distorted. They look actually much more brilliant. I'm not show you that because it's actually red and blue. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's like that. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we worked so hard on the colors. But anyway, just imagine them. Um, the economical situation in this case, the setting up of a tax-free zone and the setting up of a political institute for for planners of small Russian municipalities in embedded in an art school in Helsinki. Right, there are other projects in it which I will uh, skip. This is a project that deals with the city of Rotterdam, which tried to change itself from a city into a city province. And we got involved in the development of uh, models, you could say, on a larger scale, models that were also public spaces themselves that could be uh, used by the, by the authorities in this uh, very complex change from a city uh, with an enormous harbor into a city uh, province. And you may not know that the, the whole, their project did not succeed. And I think because of the lack of, of the specific models that could uh, create a, that, that could bring different actors and agents together so that you create in a, in a way a, a belief in the necessity of an administrative change. So this is spatial planning on quite a large, uh, large scale. In the, in the third chapter, there are several things that begin to happen. Um, the first thing, of course, is the, the touching on the notion of unfolding. You cannot see it very well here, but it's a really very simple question how to unfold. And again, we wanted to, to make it as simple, simple as possible. Uh, because the reality of, of the following scenario is, is so complex already. In this chapter, always also, we begin to, to, to create a, a theory of, of uh, what uh, Tuck introduced as the word diagrammatics. How can you write about the diagrammatics of the machinery of, of development? So what, uh, 
uh, yeah, what are the mechanics of a complex environment, what are the diagrammatics needs that needed to describe and plan this uh, uh, complex environment. So now and then you come back into a manifesto line again, I will not read them. In this case, it's the beginning of the introduction of another concept, namely the concept of, of metaspace, as you see on your right hand, which is about uh, yeah, a, a virtual space in which an unfolding or a scenario takes place. So metaspaces are spaces in which you describe the complexity or the complex dynamics. At the same time, metaspaces are necessarily embedded in the real environment. And a lot of buildings, in fact, are both physical space and metaspaces as well, if and when they refer to, to other, uh, other realities. Um, and if you look at the history of the church, the, the church building, for example, is full of that, or the history of any other type of building. So I won't touch on that too much, but there are three concepts that we're introducing here that are part of this mechanics of, uh, of, uh, of development. Icon and icon formation, and echo and resonance, and, and concept of micro model. And uh, what we've been working with is, the, is an attempt to interlink those three me mechanisms in such a way that they can be uh, as a motor, the engine of change, the motor of, of, of the development of a, of, a, of a particular kind of scenario. So we tested that in a, a large project in the city of Linz. It was a commissioned study uh, how Linz could develop its peripheries. It was about the typical problem of, of growth over and beyond the periphery of one particular city. And the, the, the kind of loss of identity of that city in many ways, not just in a topological way, in many ways. So what we did here, this is the first time we actually classified then the whole project in four, uh, four components. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just say them. There are four components where in, 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 in a periphery that was about purely about the, the creation or the enhancement of the cultural identity of the city in, in collaboration with all the, the uh, cultural institutions of that city. The second one was very much about the beginning to weave a, uh, the, the city into an urban um, industrial zone, which sat smack in the center of the city, a typical uh, European problem, and uh, how to begin to change the notion of the, of the, 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 yeah, the industrial use of the city into something that's much more interwoven. And there we did very much this, this kind of planning, new planning structures that were like a loom. The third one was about, uh, let me just jump across. So here you see, here you see them in an exploded way. Again, the colors are missing, this red actually here. So in, what is the, what we call the, the echo chamber, where the city speaks about itself. The second one is the loom, where the city begins to take over an industrial zone. The third one is called the, the flat plain or the agora, which is about the city beginning to spill out in 15 other municipalities and beginning to create a kind of general space plan with those 15 municipalities. And the fourth one you cannot see because it's a fragmented uh, project, it's a fragmented periphery. It has to do with giant uh, migration, uh, mostly from Eastern Europe, into cities like Leeds after the opening of the, of the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain, creating deep, uh, deep peripheries within the city itself. Um, so here are images, basically diagrams of the, uh, sorry, you lose the red. The red is this key. This is, I'm going to show you, it's this key element within, within the book. Um, very simple science in a way. So, Tends to work with this various kinds of cultural productions, festivals, small, large, nightly, daily, to begin to tell a story, the loom, which is about the weaving, into a very deep problem where this, there's a giant steel factory which was sitting in the center of the city, built by the German army during the Second World War, uh, with slave labor of the Mauthausen concentration camp, and then becoming the, the engine of the social democracy post war. Austria. Now, how do you deal with a situation like that? They're, they're still not managing to, to kind of stomach and handle the symbolism of a place uh, like that. So, 
Seduction of game structures to do the planning there. Light changes. The introduction of, of these uh, three terms, these three mechanisms, specifically and pinpointed, like I got, like you know, surgical moves in uh, particular environments as part of this 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 game structure. So in the, the various kind of zones of the loom come the uh, come the come these three mechanisms, the echo. Uh, micro model and uh, the icon formation. In the Agora, we found ourselves for the first time with the necessity of building up a prototype. In this case, we dealt with a region where suddenly Leeds was only one of many cities that were increasingly becoming more powerful because the, 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 the flow of goods through the southern part, the planet of the TGV and other global forces changing, shifting center of the city out towards this typical urban sprawl that, that, that looks like uh, like that. We all know this kind of kind of environments. And in order to kind of bring the, these 15 parties together, we had to set up what we call called then for the first time a prototype, which was the edge of lease as a accidental green corridor and a determined um, uh, space that was determined as, a, as, a, as one form, which was a prototype in order to begin to set up a planning institute for the, uh, the planning of this agora space, of the southern area. And it started to happen, but of course politics has to be placed on another level, so it crashed. It did not uh, happen yet. And the fourth chapter is called the Free House, where we looked at the, the enormous tensions that we are being created. This was a few years ago, at the time that the, that the Haider, now well-known international figure, won his first uh, election, had his first election successes. And uh, is we, what we did there, we tried to, we found and we lifted out through a series of uh, yeah, um, dynamic or scenarios. We found this, this older model of, of the free house in which in the Baroque period, people coming from the outside, or institutions coming from the outside, were given uh, lands or buildings in the city center tax-free in order that the <coughs> city could enrich itself with people from uh, restraint was effectively. Uh, highly politically charged, complex, and yet a, a necessary model, as now is, 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 is clear in, in Austria, that we need these kinds of, uh, kinds of models. Then we started to look at a series of actual prototypes, which I'll skip in this case, which, which, which started to combine and connect the, 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 the fields, the, operate, the operational fields of these uh, four peripheral chunks. So they're like hinges, but they each of them have a particular uh, yeah, set of programs and architectural uh, condition uh, put together. I hasten to say that this book is, is about architecture, but in a widened sense. It's not necessarily about uh, buildings. Although that's a further consequence of the first chapter. How do you deal with it? How do you act? How do you begin to build prototypes? And how do you manage them in an urban environment? So how do you pick out the right bit of, of global processes and, and regulate their flows? <coughs> so at that point, the, really, the, the, the key thing we started to look at was the notion of conflict as a, as a generating device in, in urban dynamics. And the notion, the necessity of negotiation within a conflict environment, which allows you to get in more actors and agents. The notion of the non-settlement in order to keep the dynamics going. And the, the introduction of the new conflict as a, as a generative tool that points towards one particular kind of setup, kind of planning environment. Uh, so one of the tools that that's we're now using increasingly is the is the, the constant introduction of a particular kind of conflict in order to get a certain set of actors and agents uh, together. The management of urban change thrives on the cycle of conflict negotiation and non settlement. And so of course, we had to try to find this notion of the little body as something that is both embedded in reality and at the same time threshold to other spaces and other forces. And here's it's another favorite of mine, mine is 
a small painting by Duccio, which is uh, of the Annunciation. It's here in the National Gallery. Beautiful painting, beautiful architectural construct. You know, boy meets girl in space. They cannot meet because the angel is a heavenly creature. They cannot meet. Therefore, there's this line in the middle, always this line. A very simple architectural construct that somehow regulates the flows of this, of this space. So that's a little body in that, in that case. Uh, other projects started to emerge at the time and where we could implement these things in, in projects where we could develop prototypes in Tokyo, a project where we could develop for the first time liminal bodies as, as yeah, organizations, in this case, the case of the Locker Girls. Uh, I've spoken about this many times. The Locker Girls we found in, um, through the beam method, again, through the random sampling method, we found the, beam, the, the, the Locker Girls in the, the, the May station of Kyoto. They're girls that, uh, school girls that prostitute themselves during the lunch hour. And they become a kind of small urban institution. And the question is, of course, uh, for the city authority, how, do you, how can you, Within the kind of urban planning, you need to deal with the, the, the large scale problems that are related to the, of course, age related. And uh, how do you create uh, new authorities? That's the question that really started to come up in, in, in connection to this, uh, this, this form of little body. Here. How can you shift the authority structure in an urban environment? And that's something we need to do more and more. Uh, more and more in situations, there is no particular client. There's not sp one specific authority that can commission you or can approve a project. Often, uh, we as planners and the architects have to actually be part of the creation of, of, of authority structures and constellations ourselves. And often we need to do that by finding the specific conditions like, like this little body formed by the, uh, the locker girls of the, of the, of the station. Will not go into specifics there, you can read about it. In Kyoto, we did a series of larger scale scenarios about how you, you could shift the, the authority landscape of Greater Kyoto in order to deal with a series of quite serious problems like uh, water depletion, they, they are losing the water sources, and the planning of the land needed for the water sources. And at that point, we started to look at the actual topology of scenarios itself. And we started to realize that we have to give an additional metaphorical uh, uh, name to the, to the notion of a little body, namely that of a stepping stone. Namely, a little body is a stepping stone of interlinking or intertwining scenarios. And this is another key element that, that in a way, we discovered in the, in the kind of latter stage of the, the making of the book. I have to say, the book was never planned as one thing. It, it, it kind of grew. You know, we, it was a very different book when we applied for the first grants from the Dutch government <laughs> and then and six years ago. And then somehow it kept shifting. And the, the structure you see right now is, is actually quite recent. <laughs> so it's a, don't think it was a clearly planned thing at all. Not at all. It actually developed over quite a few years. And only very recently, during the last year and a half, um, yeah, we. Uh, we, uh, we, sh we started to feel, okay, there's a clarity about it, so now it should go out, otherwise we <laughs> keep going with it. So here you see, uh, you see one of the stepping stones that, that interlink uh, the different, uh, different scenarios. And this is really the key element of the work. I'll, I'll, I'll show something else for a few minutes. It's a planning project in, in Bucharest, which then begins to look at different timelines of layers and the necessity to begin to plan this interlinking in time. And I will not get into that. This is a project that dealt with the center of Bucharest after the destruction of the center by Ceausescu. Uh, this project begins to use quite pragmatic uh, components like the uh, water treatment plants and other uh, urban amenities. Now I want to just jump to the end. Yeah. Towards the end, we started to feel okay. We actually can begin to call this meta space a name. We, we call it the urban gallery. Here you see kind of a, a rough version of it. The urban gallery is four layers. They're like drawers, and we should begin to sort out things. And right now, uh, um, <coughs> we are beginning to do work in uh, in Ireland, and uh, 
at the beginning, discovered this whole metaphor of the covenant with four doors. It's very useful, actually, to people that have no idea of concepts uh, of which this book is full. But the metaphor is simple and, and easy to use, so you, the, the sorting out so it helps. So we started to set up a new uh, cabinet, which specifically dealt with the prototype. And I'm going to show a few images of that later. And that's, that, that cabinet has the doors of brand new earth flow and incorporation. And that is a, 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 a cabinet, a, a form, an architecture of the urban gallery we introduced in several projects, one in Timisoara in Romania, and one in a project for which we uh, won a prize in, in, in the orchestra. I'm, I'm going to show you this on the computer for another <coughs> 10 minutes. The colors really are, are dead here. <laughs> cool. So, um, where we, for the first time, as a very public, introduced this urban gallery as a method, as a, as a tool. We won a prize, a fair prize. It was just, okay, it was nice, you know, but then <laughs> it was politically a bit difficult for the city to give us the first prize, but then they asked us afterwards, and more quietly, they, they, they came back to us to say, well, can you begin to organize the, the whole second phase of the, the project? And it has to do with the urban development of the, the area, three kilometer long area between a huge harbor uh, that's expanding rapidly in the Baltic uh, Sea and the city of Orbis in Denmark. And I want to show you that uh, in, 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 in the PowerPoint because you cannot see that here, but that's what the book ends with. I want to show you a little bit about the application of, of this, this structure uh, in that. So the book ends with this, uh, um, well, it's just showing the, the bits, the, the urban plots and bits and pieces that are part of this, 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 this structure, which I'm going to maybe we shift now. I uh, just want to keep you another 10 minutes and I'll show you some of the imagery of that, of that project, because you don't see anything in there. Can we shift you well to the... Yeah. So that's once more the urban gallery, which is actually built up in this structure. It has a database, prototypes, scenario games, and action plans. That's the main architecture of, the, um, of what we call the urban gallery. And it's a plaything, too. You know, to, in a way, it's a virtual space which we get things from the outside and we put them back in again it's in order to create an interconnectivity inside the kind of weaving, you know, the kind of weaving inside, inside the, the virtual box is, of course, what we are, we are trying to get at, the, the, the interweaving between intersexual uh, conditions. You know, the kind of like, projection of these things out again in the kind of environments. Um, this is something that we developed uh, in, the, in the, our diploma unit here with Petra. Much as uh, during the last two years, three years, uh, trying to kind of uh, make it more precise, the structure of the database prototype scenario and action plan. And I show you a few images of a, a test project we did for the, where we tried to, for the first time to place this in a kind of uh, spatial, uh, yeah, a s a spatial framework uh, like this, uh, both real and yet a meta space. So we used the, the web to place it there. So. Um, here I go into, it's not, I mean, I'm not actually on the web, but it's on the web, although in a frozen condition. It was a collaboration between the Tokyo University Architectural Association and the Berlage Institute, and uh, too many people were involved. Um, you see a rough version again of the four, the four uh, areas, you could say. And there we developed for the first time a more systematic database, something we're doing also now in the, um, in the, uh, in the units. Let me just show you this. Um, here, here it is. Just show you a few glimpses of that. You know, so that it has about 400 pages. Each one has one of these mini scenarios. There are about 400 points, sorry, 400 points in this map. Each one has a, a, a small yeah, database of four processes like this. They're tiny little stories. It's small Japanese style houses demolished after the site has been cleaned, it's fenced around. The site is rented, whoops, I can't read that. The site is rented as parking lot. The urban character of the area changes its traditional Japanese style. So this is something we're also working with right now. Then there were, um, there are many of that you can see. Then there were the introduction of prototypes uh, uh, like this, just to show you one here from Patrick. Uh, LAM, a prototype, is called Urban Parasite. It has to do with kind of high-tech 
lightweight textiles that are added onto buildings to create additional uh, space. And so there's a whole list of those prototypes that were imported the into that situation. Now fully charged. Thank you. I, did, I still don't know how to shut this thing off. <laughs> <laughs> Please somebody tell me. <laughs> then we got involved in the, uh, for the first time into the uh, running of, of, of uh, scenario games. I'll just show you a, a typical one here. Oops, what's that? Um, initially the, the scenario games were basically still scripted with light images. So you see player, the four players, one animator. A table here you see this kind of scripting and some imagery now we're trying to develop this much more into a, a, a yeah, new graphic form as well and uh, here you can see it started from being very light funny things towards actually a debate on on the on the establishment of new types of, of cultural knots along an infrastructure that's that 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 leads to the new um well new re re newly established international airport in in, in tokyo so a kind of light still, and yet beginning to be complex. <clears throat> and then action plans, which are very raw on this website, but which is now becoming the main thing in, in the, the new types of projects we're uh, we involved in in, uh, in Ireland through the links of uh, and the push of Gary, who's here in, 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 the, in the front. So we are now finding out that actually these terms are becoming hard-edged, necessary tools uh, I'll show you next one more step, which is the. Okay, th th this is. Uh, Tuck never liked this drawing, but I still like to show it. <laughs> it's a it's a very rough version of the architecture of, uh, of this this site, and it's crude but it's visual. Where well, you see the prototypes on the left, no, sorry, the, the data database on the left, or it's a simulation of the database, right? Just the mini scenarios, prototypes, scenarios, and action plans, and this is the topology of one project. And. Uh, the, the, you know, the linking that one project creates. Okay, here you see uh, us at work in Tokyo. This is the one scenario set up. And this is nice because during the project we were able to involve developers, the guy on, on the left with the glasses, one of the main developers of Tokyo, and politicians into the project who actually were brought into it with great, no, they loved it. And so I, I thought, well, that's okay, that's fine. Now let me do it later again, and then I did I have a few images I still want to show. It's in Uvascula. We did a very funny thing. So here you see the props of the game. And a few words about this project, which is called Orhis Horizon, where we now are involved with the, uh, although, again, there's political difficulties, but involved in the planning of the edge between the city and the harbor, which we made in a very simple icon. We just placed a line between the vastly expanding harbor. And I've just flown over that again. It's now finished, this harbor. And we did that by creating this very simple icon, which is a public space. It is a horizon. It has many verb forms in it, but it is an instrument to which we tie different prototypes to deal with all the stuff that sits in there. So that was the image that we dealt with. And on the top, you see four layers with pictograms, each representing a program. And they are organized in the schematic structure of the, of the four layers, branding, earth, flow, and incorporation. And each time we tie a set of those together in one of the prototypes, whoops, which are denoted by the red letters. The red letters is, is a site of the prototype, which can be a building, a set of buildings, an organizational structure, a law, and so on and so forth. Um, you see a close up. So you see some of the structures, plants there. You see the prototype boxes appearing. <coughs> They're actually programs for prototypes. There are architectural sketches in there, but not very developed. It could be like this. Uh, it gets very pragmatic, very real. <laughs> Fish. Culture. This comes from Isaac, who's here in the front. So the prototypes are always organized through the schemes here. Here you see the prototype boxes, typical prototype boxes, which actually is, a, is, a, is, a, is like a brief for a particular kind of prototype, which then would be developed by many others, uh, not, only, uh, not only us. It may yet happen, I don't know, I just heard that the politics are changing again. So this is the, the principle of that uh, shift, that, 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 that kind of dynamics. You have to 
four layers of operational fields from which we take bits, they go into a prototype, feedback into the operational layers, and create a kind of feedback situation that's dynamic. And then uh, this whole thing has to be seen over time. Now then we set up a series of workshops, which I want to end with. I want to show you what we did then later on. There's some uh, other work I think I'm going to leave right now. I just want to end with this set of slides. We were asked by the city of Uvascula to then come in there, do the same with them. So we did these scenarios. Now, so we have the scenario tables here. There were actual physical models as centers of some of the scenarios. What we did, we brought a series of animators from the city together. That's the mayor of the city of Uvascula. one of the main re political representatives, chief manager of Nokia, drawing, <laughs> chief architect of the city. The, the guy on the right hand is chief of the roadworks. On the middle, chief of railways, national railways. You see the hesitation? Uh, there he goes. <laughs> and the mayor couldn't stay away, came in. This is an alto building in Uvascula. Had to play as well thinking of what he loved it at the end and came through as well. And <coughs> here it's full and swung. And here he goes, railways. <laughs> this was about a big site like in Aarhus, similar, railways, lake, city, industry, and so on. You don't see it in there. So this was the first time they interacted like this. They had never uh, been able to achieve that. Okay, and this goes back to one of the things we've done here in the in the um, in the diploma unit to, to to try to find out really precisely how does the scenario uh, thing work, uh, and well, to show a very slick image, you can actually draw it like this. This is a silicon graphic image. If you look carefully, there's a little yellow bit that kind of goes into in a spiral up, and at some point it gets injected. Uh, by a prototype. So that comes up and bingo. Yeah, the prototype starts to <laughs> starts to operate. <laughs> this is uh, was done by one of uh, JR student in a workshop in Oslo. Uh, and we've done developed that uh, method further in a series of short um, uh, Projects. This was a shortlisted project for the East Man Manchester Regeneration Plan, uh, which we did with a consortium of, of people, where we actually developed that uh, towards uh, an attempt for a successful city. <laughs> you got to brand it somehow. And uh, then we came in the, in the Biennale in Graz, we came back again uh, to just simplifying it and saying, well, let's always come back to this simplification and let's make a cabinet of objects. And that was part of the the Biennale in, in Graz. And I would like to uh, end with that, uh, that image uh, here. Thank you very much, Anderson. Please, if you want to come later. That's right.